All right. Hello and welcome to the Why Travel podcast. Today, we're going to talk to you about our ski trip in Idaho. Yes, our first ever family ski trip because normally we chase the sun and we had a fantastic, uh, what, six days, seven days in northern Idaho at three different ski resorts. Mm -hmm. That's right. We did five days in skiing in all all. (laughs) Um, and we're going to share a bit about that experience, what we loved about it things we found challenging and a little bit about the ski resort destinations that we went to. Yes, there was lots to love and we finally found our feet towards (laughs) the end. We didn't want to leave because once we start getting good, um, you you like everything, you enjoy it more, the better you are at it. Yeah. (laughs) um, We did did pretty well considering I'm 47 and it's probably pretty crazy that you think that it's the first time I've ever been skiing ever. Well, we have um, many, many years ago, but I I don't count that. It was fake snow in North Carolina. (laughs) Uh, This is real powder in yeah. northern idaho on a family trip in three different ski resorts so yeah um, i'm calling it our first time yeah i think it was our first real real skiing experience first for the girls anyway and it was kind of one of the biggest adventures we've been on for a long time i think for us we've done so much travel and we've you know seen so many beautiful beaches and we've done zip lining kayaking hiking all these adventurous stuff that usually are in the warmer <laughs> climates more tropical Mm. um and so it's been a while since we've done a completely new experience or completely new adventure so it was it was fantastic for that reason alone really yeah i mean we've hiked in the snow before and we've been to plenty high altitudes of mountains and stuff like that but yeah but physically like an different a new, adventure a new activity yeah. yeah this is skiing we've never done anything like yeah. skiing before so yeah and it's cool to learn a, a new activity together it was a mm. good way for us to bond and um, laugh and there was no tears thankfully well <laughs> I did get to a point on our <laughs> first ski lesson or perhaps no it was the second day mm. at Schweitzer after we'd had a three hour ski lesson the day before and we decided that we'd go down the enchanted forest and I got a little teary then because I was fed up because I could not get my turns and it was much steeper and I ended up in the forest and I was like I don't think I can get down this steep part I don't think I can do it I'm not clever enough like not clever but not capable enough and I'm really scared and I just want to take the skis off and walk down and um but I pulled myself together and skied down it yeah we got a bit ahead of ourselves on that run but uh (laughs) yeah we made it back down the mountain luckily (laughs) in one piece too um but yeah that that was I mean it was fun it was a little freaky at the time but you know funny now that's all part of the adventure of learning and getting out of your comfort zone, I guess. But yeah, you got to be yeah. safe. Yeah. Like, cause you hear a skiing and you know, like, you know, it is a little, it can be a little dangerous. People do hurt knees and ankles and stuff like that. But. Yeah. I mean, skiing's t- intense. I'm not going to lie about it. it. It's intense. It's scary. And if you, you know, you're flying down the mountain <laughs> you on skis and you don't know how to stop and you're only fresh on the powder. You don't know what you're doing. You know the uh, pizza wedge stop. That's pretty easy. But when you I, – I don't know how many times I came flying down that mountain completely out of control. Now, by the end of the week, I had learned how to control my speed better, but – that feeling when you're like, oh my God, I'm flying down this mountain. I do not know how to stop. And trees coming fast, trees coming trees fast. Trees coming. And sometimes you just actually throw yourself on the ground well, just I had to, to do stop that. I yourself. had to do that a few times. I mean, you learn these skills, but, um, and you're comfortable with them at a, a certain speed and um, decline, like percent, like the um, gradient. degree of percentage of gradient. But yeah, add a few more extra miles an hour and a bit steeper mm. and you can panic quickly and even the pizza stop can't stop you sometimes. No. <laughs> it slow you down but it won't stop you. <laughs> and I, yeah, even myself a couple of times I just had to like stack it just to stop. Yeah. Just throw myself down. I was like... <laughs> yeah. But... There, yeah. Was the, there was the one... It, it was funny. We went down on the very last ski resort. The bear something it was called and it was a steeper green as our wonderful instructor Mike told us who was mm. so impressed with our skills from the day before and believed we were very capable of going down this <laughs> thing and I'm sure that we were except as soon as I saw how steep it was I completely freaked out and forgot everything and <laughs> kept falling over plus we had the camera crew filming us so I was 
very aware of that and worried about actually looking like I could ski rather than careening off into the forest like I did do a couple of times. And I remember at this one stage, Mike had so much faith in me and he's like, come on, you can do this, we're going to do this. And I fell again, crashed into the tree, <sighs> my ski came off and he's lifting me up such an amazing all the our ski instructors were amazing they were like in their 70s so much skill didn't fall over once but could pick us up off the ground and not fall over either but he was trying to pick me up and I kind of just nudged the ski a little bit so it slid down the hill and then I didn't have to ski down because I was like oh Mike there goes my ski I can't I think I'm just gonna walk down and get it (laughs) yeah Yeah, that's kind of like playing golf and you get a bit frustrated with your shots and you do the old sand shoe shot like just kick it back out on the fairway and a little bit of cheating but yeah that's so uh, playing golf that was a funny shade of green that run i think a, a serious tinge of blue in it that was, blue. <laughs> that, was a, that was an intense green run and if you don't know skiing like they're color coded for difficulty and greens like for beginners and newbies like us and the mm-hmm. next one is blue we think this was a blue one we're sure it was a blue one <laughs> and we actually did a blue one at lookout pass the ski resort before that which we didn't even realize we were on it was it was blue i only found out later when i was putting the content together and i was looking at stuff online i was like oh my god that was a blue run we went down it with an instructor and he was great in helping us get down but this one was worse than that mm. much steeper but the girls they were they were fantastic it was amazing how oh. well they got down it, it was oh, awesome. our kids were way better than us we kind of yeah. knew they would be like they are, their balance was great mm. they don't have as much fear as we do yeah. i guess but um yeah both the girls did really well yeah um, and they took to it pretty naturally they did cool. they did and, and i mean it's fun having this experience with your kids not just for the awesomeness of skiing and how much fun it is when you actually do stay standing and, and you get a good run down and it, it's you know we did snow tubing and all of this but it's also you know the bad moments too are part of the experience I'm not saying bad as in awful but challenging mm. times like you fall over and, and they were just their memories we have now that we laugh at like there was another place at lookout pass where we went down a run on our own and realized well way in over our depth and we started freaking out because the trail wasn't properly marked and we thought we'd ended up on a blue run and there's all these blue and blacks coming off it and we're like oh and we were so stressed all of us and anyway we figured out we weren't we're like okay we can get down this mountain because it was the steepest one we tried at that point and I just remember Kalira flying down the mm. mountain, heading straight for a tree. <laughs> and we're all just looking, oh, please, please, please stop, please stop. And then she's just thrown herself back in a starfish <laughs> and landed on the snow and, and missed the tree. But it was like, I mean, at the time it was scary, but now we laugh about that. We're like, what about your starfish thrown back <laughs> onto the snow? Like, so it's as long as you're not hurting yourself and we hope that you don't when you go skiing. But, mm. you know, those stories become part of the adventure and the fun stuff too. Yeah, when she's hurling across the mountain like that and <laughs> you can see something bad's going to happen, but you're powerless to do anything. You just can't stop it because like, you're too far away and she's going too quick and there's nothing good do anyway unless tackle her or something but um <laughs> you yeah. weren't close enough for that but it was good yeah, we all did she figured we all, it out. yeah we all did that i bounced off a tree once or twice into <laughs> the forest and um yeah it's like even sometimes you're not even going fast you could just be standing still like or, or yeah. waiting to get on a chairlift and just one slight movement of your body weight in the wrong direction or you oh twist your foot the wrong way and you just tangled up and you're on the deck like <laughs> <laughs> so quickly and so easily because I guess we're not used to having like five foot long feet no <laughs> no actually I think that even we knocked each other over at oh. times just standing there and yeah our first crash I actually took Kalira out it was on our very first lesson down the like <laughs> Bunny Hill wasn't a bad hill, but I had no control and just skied right into her. Yeah. It was one of the only crashes she did. She didn't do much. She was pretty cool on the skis. Yeah, no, it's fine. All right, so where were we exactly? You may want to share exactly where we went. Yeah, so we went to uh, northern Idaho. We flew into Spokane, which is actually in Washington. It's just over the border. And Spokane. Spokane, sorry. I used to say it wrong, too. It's like people say Mel- Melbourne Drop the it's e. really Melbourne. But Spokane. Spoke- Spokane. And um, so we went to the panhandle of northern Idaho, which is the very northern part of the country, and it's only 70 miles wide from Washington State to Montana. And within that area are three ski resorts. 
and they're only a maximum of two hour drive between all of them. So that was really um, presented an amazing skiing opportunity in that you didn't just have to stay in one resort you could really go and explore three of them like we did over the week and another great thing is it's um not as well known so it was we had lots of space there on the mountain we didn't have to worry really about people careening down and crashing into us and and the powder there is great um so it was a really wonderful experience i loved it for all those reasons yeah, even though I've never skied before and never been in the scene, even growing up in Australia, I'd heard of Sun Valley, like the mm-hmm. more famous ski area in Idaho, mm-hmm. um, down more towards Boise. But yeah, through, you know, Hollywood and movies and mm-hmm. what have you, celebs and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, as you said, we, we flew from Raleigh into Spokane, uh, rented a car for a week, and it was like just an hour and a half's drive to the first one was Schweitzer Mountain Resort near Sandpoint. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, like two hours to look out pass and then like, uh, was 15 less, minutes less, yeah way less than an hour from Lookout Pass to Silver Mountain it's only but 13 we'll, miles apart so it wasn't yeah it was easy close. yeah and it was good and they all, all, we'll, we'll talk about more of them in depth but all three of them offered something different which was cool yeah and like you mentioned Sun Valley um, but they get more powder up in, in uh, the northern Idaho mm. and Lookout Pass which was the second one we went to they get the most snow out of all of the Idaho ski resorts yeah 400 inches on average annually which mm-hmm. is a lot like a lot. compared <laughs> when we would go from nothing to four mm-hmm. like what four inches one time a year in Raleigh You're for our lucky. snowfall <laughs> <laughs> that's a 400 inches annually and yeah Lookout Pass that's it that's what they're known for plus apparently they have the best groomed runs which is important for skiers they like that like some skiers like the like just the natural um trails that haven't been groomed but also a lot of people like the groomed runs Mm -hmm. which is look at past but anyway maybe we should start with Schweitzer and go there or unless you want to talk about something else quickly no Schweitzer I mean Schweitzer mountain is um we went there in the summertime as well it's absolutely spectacular you can't beat the views from up there because you look out, out over Lake Pondere and Sandpoint and on a clear day you can even see all the way it's a quarter lane as well it's yeah you can't beat the views it's just gorgeous and it's it's um I think it's actually the Pacific Northwest most premier ski resort but definitely in Idaho it's the largest yeah the biggest ski resort uh there what and so it like um Oh, how many cheerlifts and runs were there? Over 90 runs or something? Yeah, I, I think like, it's about that. I can't remember, but we do have um, we do have a blog post which has lists all those specifics on there for you, um, which you can check that out on whytravelblog.com. We'll leave it in the show notes as well. But yeah, it does. And it's really cool. Schweitzer is really cool because it's, it's a ski and ski out resort. If you stay there, obviously locals don't do that, but you can stay in the middle of the mountain hmm. um, at the resort there, which was really cool because then we just a couple of steps out, we're on the ski run. Yeah, that, that village room. atmosphere, which well, like even though I've never been like that, interested in doing skiing i've always wanted to be a part of the village and mm. stuff like not just the skiing but like the you know go to a bar or a pub after it have lunch mm-hmm. sit around a fire whatever yeah and get, it's a, get amongst the village atmosphere. atmosphere yeah it's fun yeah because yeah, everyone's outdoors. skiing and they're happy because they mm. probably just did a double black and <sighs> did some flips and turns we weren't doing that we were happy that we could stay and standing on our skis for longer than five minutes so you have a lot to celebrate a lot of stories to share after it um so yeah that was cool i liked being in amongst it there and staying Mm. there even though it's cold obviously it's snow weather but you got the right gear on you don't notice it or like the proper layers and the proper gear Mm. um so didn't even i mean we had pretty good weather like 50 and dry i mean dry obviously is key like yeah. a, a wet cold is miserable. But dry cold is not too bad. Yeah, we were, we were happy because we not went to people. So we were stoked actually spring skiing is probably more our kind of thing. I think the first day, Schweiz was the coldest for us. I think the first day got down to 28. But then after mm. that, it, we did get up into the 50s. So it was lovely. Mm. We stripped the layers off and, and off we went. But yeah, Schweitzer was great. We did a 
three hour lesson there and Mary Jo with Mary Jo Mary Jo the private family like yeah hot tip get a definitely get a lesson and if you can get get a a private lesson lesson, because more hands on with the instructor like one instructor to the four of us was perfect yeah it was it was great and she took us on a green run the (laughs) troll bridge run as well (laughs) patient with us and she was yeah she's had what (laughs) how many years of experience yeah I know we were on the chairlift coming back from the run and I was with her and I said so how long have you been skiing Mary Jo and she's like oh about 64 years (laughs) I (laughs) fell off the chair I was like oh my goodness amazing (laughs) incredible yeah yeah. so yeah she was she was fun she was great and we enjoyed that and um tried to do some of the runs on our by ourselves the next day as well and yeah we did okay for a first time like our first two days ever um yeah the pizza stop and learning some turns yeah um yeah going down some slopes the green runs yeah didn't yeah. get to any blues there, but that was very early on in the piece. Yeah, see, with Schweitzer, the green ones are at where the ski village is and they go down the mountain from there and then you get the cheerlift back up to the village. But all, all the other harder runs, the blues and the blacks, are going up to mm-hmm. the top of the mountain from the village, taking the chairlift up and skiing down. So we did not feel capable at all to do that no. because they were steep runs down. But... Um, it doesn't matter if you're like us, you can still get up to the top and have an experience like we did. We took the chairlift up and just went up to lunch because they have the Sky House restaurant up there. Yeah, that's a must-do in Schweitzer, the Sky House. It's a, a restaurant at the top. I um, mean, you got the front side and the back side of the mountain and Sky House sits on the top of the peak. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, amazing views, great food, had an awesome bison burger. Um, kids had a, a soft drink and we had the, a great coffee called a duck fart coffee and now just picture yep. that try and picture that for a minute like what, what comes to mind when you say <laughs> duck fart coffee <laughs> but the ingredients were it was canadian whiskey baileys kalua whipped cream and coffee of course yeah and uh yeah it was delicious yeah like, tasty warming and when you're in the snow and yeah it was yeah it was, it was cool. cool really suited the whole ski apres the ski yeah, experience yeah. and just looking out over those views and we're watching the experienced skiers take on those harder runs so that was really nice and anyone can do that you can just go up on the chairlift and come back down um the ideal would be if you were an experienced skier to go up have lunch mm. Have you shot a snap and then uh, not too many. ski down <laughs> like we were watching people do. And from up there, you can access the Outback Bowl too. So the back side of the mountain has a ton of runs as well. And you can actually ski down into the Outback Bowl and there's an inn down at the bottom, mm. the Outback Inn. So you can eat there and then you'll catch the chairlift back up and then ski back down the, the uh, Schweitzer side. Oh, ski goals. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know, in a few years. <laughs> yeah, let us know if you've but done like, it. They're intense. You get up there and you see those black runs just down the top of a black run and you're like, a whole new respect for people that can ski or oh snowboard, gosh. man. Like, people are just flying down there and turn, like, you know, looking effortlessly. Oh. And I'm like, there's no way. Unbelievable. At the start of those, you have to, some of them, the double blacks, you're just doing like a jump mm. off the edge of the mountain to get mm. started. It was like, woof. Mm. I think I'd be happy... I think I'm going to be happy just being a green run skier, going around the world world just skiing green runs. Yeah, well, you know, I I I mean, each resort, like, (laughs) I'm sure they're graded similarly, but some, like, there's easier and harder green runs, as we found out. But uh, yeah, green was good. A blue, a blue would be good. I'd like to get up to a blue. Well, we but, did in lookout. Well, we yeah, did but do like a blue. actually be able to ski it yeah. <laughs> instead of like <laughs> falling over every five um, tiptoeing down. <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah the, and it is a good idea yeah. if you're doing the skiing in northern Idaho and going to the three different resorts to start at Schweitzer if you're a beginner, mm. because we did find the green runs the easiest there. Yeah, and then they got progressively harder as we moved through. So that yeah. means plus you're in a village too. Which which was which was yeah. which was great in the fact that we're not used to having so much layers and so much gear. Mm. So like you could ski for a little bit, and then you got easy access back to your room. Mm. You could get on, get changed, and then maybe walk around, have lunch, um, and then get suited up again, do some more skiing. So that was practical. Yeah, it was. Like in that sense, it was. It was really good, especially when you have those very awkward ski boots that. Mm. It's hard to walk in. You get used yeah, to the ski to boot gate. Thump around with them. Everyone has the same kind of gate to their walk around there yeah that's what was good i loved having a beer on the deck at taps bar at the end of the day mm-hmm. what, overlooking the 
big mountain drop and seeing the boulders and skiers flying down. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Coming down for the end of the day and clearing. And that was great because we were staying there and it, and it was quiet. So mm. by the time everyone finished their last run and they headed out, it was like we almost had the mountain to ourselves and it was so serene and beautiful and the sun was setting and it was lovely. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Swats was good. As we said, we've been there in summer and now done winter. So yeah. Yeah. It's got a lot to offer. It's an amazing place. And in the summer, if you're into mountain biking, it's the place for mountain biking or hiking. Mm. Mm. Um, we went there and we did uh, zip lining and um, rock climbing. The kids mm-hmm. did that when we were there. So they have a bunch of stuff up there too in the uh, summertime. And then you have the Lake Pondere, which has some beautiful beaches, Sandpoint. The town down there has Sandpoint City Beach, which is just beautiful. So it's a yeah, lovely, Sandpoint's lovely area. a good town too. Like easy, mm-hmm. accessible. Like I said, you could either stay there and drive up for the day. or. Um, but yeah, it's got some, some cool bars, mm-hmm. some cool restaurants, cafes. Um, yeah, it's a pretty chilled town. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, and so after that, we moved to Lookout Pass. Um, Lookout Pass is it's actually easily accessed. It's right on the uh, I-95, I think, I-95 or I-90, one of them. And 95. 90. It's a 90, so it must be. Yeah, that's what I thought. Anyway, <laughs> it's something like that. But it's off the, the highway, and it's right on the border of Montana. So if you ski mm. there, you actually ski two states because the Tamarack run which we did actually but there's more than that but the Tamarack run actually goes you ski keep skiing between Idaho and Montana and then other runs there are actually there's the Montana side of the mountain and then there's the Idaho side of the mountain filled with run so that's a really neat feature of it yeah it's cool it's uh yeah so look out past ski and recreation area mm-hmm. it uh it's a it's a ski only like there's no village or ski and ski out situation it's just a ski mm-hmm. place to go skiing and we stayed in a town called wallace like 20 minutes away um which was great and yeah that look out pass was cool as we said it's got the most snow um groom runs and yeah we had some cool runs there on the huckleberry and the tamarack i had another lesson with tom, tom. Yep, he's and great. And learnt some more different techniques and different turns. And the cool thing is, like, the more lessons you have, the more instructors, you learn something new every time. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, you're getting better as well. So, yeah, Tom was cool, very yeah. patient with the kids and, he yeah, took us, took us for a few runs. Yeah, he was he was great. He was so supportive and encouraging mm. and another um, man that's been around the, the block on the skis too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a really comforting thing to know too, is that you know, they, they have to be obviously very highly skilled to be an instructor and all the instructors we had had worked in like as snow patrol or um mm. forest land management as skiers yeah. doing that so they and the they trade. had like 50 years plus experience yeah. each one <laughs> so i mean they it was, it was they were the best teachers and they were great and that's one thing about the north idaho area as well it was very affordable mm. lessons are really affordable there and lookout pass i know at a certain time each season they actually offer free school um free lessons for kids ski school lessons for kids so mm-hmm. that's a great thing to to look out for and, and see when those times are so that you can go and take advantage of that yeah um we had some snowfall too while we we're skiing mm-hmm. lookout pass which was cool it's pretty yeah. yeah and uh otherwise the weather was great it's yeah just a little bit in the afternoon but yeah, no, look how past was good. That's, this is, if you followed our site, now we wrote a blog post because we've also been there out of season. We did the, the route of the Hiawatha 15-mile mm-hmm. yeah, famous bike ride through the, the tunnels and across the bridges. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, so that's, it's that region, yeah. That's where we hide our bikes from. Yeah, and it's so beautiful, even winter or summer. It's in the Bitterroot Mountains and mm. – um, it, the scenery is just gorgeous and I loved that one felt like we were sort of immersed in the forest more when we were skiing at mm. Lookout but you still got in some sections you still got these beautiful views over the mountains all the way to Silver Mountain where we which was our next stop um, so each of the resorts had a different feel to it in terms of the landscape and the, and the views and that one was I thought um, very different to the other two it was, it was pretty more of an immersion kind of feeling mm, totally yeah, so that was – we only had one day skiing at Lookout because um, we had the two nights in Wallace but just the one day at Lookout. So we had our lesson, did a bit of skiing ourselves and and just kind of enjoyed the serenity of that mountain again, not too busy. Um, so it was a lot of fun. And then we, we stayed in Wallace, which I find Wallace such an intriguing Yeah, it's a town. charming little – 
town, obviously the old mining history and stuff. And um, yeah, it's got some character, um, great food mm -hmm. again, good brew pubs, coffee, like cafes. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cool little place. It's really unique. And it is the, um, for over 100 years now, it has been the biggest producer of silver in the world. Mm. Still is. It still um, produces the silver there. So it has a um, very unique history there with the silver and you can explore those and every time we go to Wallace this is our second time to Wallace I'm like oh I want to come back here and explore more of mm. Wallace but we've actually been too busy <laughs> enjoying activities. all the wonderful outdoor adventures they have uh, close access to but the buildings there are, it's just so unique and different I've not been to a town that looks like that yeah like such a unique mix of historic buildings and it's just a cool place so yeah the kind of out. small historic towns I like to mm. like to visit instead of you know your typical you know well-known cities or yeah. uh, medium-sized cities but yeah cool charming historical small town america that's, yeah that's good yeah and we both times now we've stayed at the wallace inn there which is a great little spot right near downtown mm -hmm. and they have um really nice indoor pool and spa area and they have the floor to wall ceiling so you get the feeling that you're right there in the snow yeah. but you're warm inside so yeah had nice. a hot tub compulsory hot tub, hot tub yeah. as you do <laughs> after a day of skiing so that was great yeah and the breakfast in the hotel too i mean like your, your hotel breakfast is gonna be very hit and miss that yeah. one's a great one it is a good one like it's yeah very hearty mm -hmm. good amount of menu items yeah that was a good, good start to the day perfect for a day of skiing yes and then we drove 13 miles back uh, west to go to Silver Mountain. And Silver Mountain was a different experience. Again, it was more of, I guess, an all-inclusive kind of family experience because, well, even if you're not traveling as a family, but we stayed in the town of Kellogg where it is. Again, it's not a um, skiing and out place. It's just a day skiing area. But So you stay in Kellogg at the Silver Mountain Resort. Mm. And they had a lot of amenities there, including an indoor water park, which you get access too if you if you stay at the resort um so that was great and we had to catch a gondola up to the um ski field so it's the longest uh gondola ride in north america so yeah it was a unique feature yeah what was it the uh, three miles or something 3.1 miles took about yep. 25 minutes mm -hmm. to get up there and yeah amazing views yeah so that was gorgeous fun. views and really pretty yeah 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 that's a cool way to start the yeah. day. another new perspective again yeah um so ride that up pretty fun and then then yeah i mean it went there was two levels like we went and went halfway up the mountain and it was yeah like we weren't crazy high experience enough to go no. even <laughs> go higher to the, the blue and black run sitting at the top of um um i think it is kellogg peak actually the very top one i yeah. think wardner peak was the one that we were at mm -hmm. um we almost ended up there actually we went in there um the first day before our ski lesson and we said okay we're pretty good now let's take on a uh, green run ourselves and so we did and we weren't paying attention when we got to the bottom and we lined up for the chairlift and it was just before we got on that I saw the sign that said no beginning ski runs at the top of the mountain off this chairlift and I was like oh my gosh everyone stop turn around we can't take this chairlift I can only imagine if we got stuck yeah it would have been a there. slow oh. decline I might have been making a phone call to the snow, <laughs> snow patrol <laughs> Actually, we did tell our instructors and they did say, um, if that happens, so we can pass on their advice to you, that they, you can come back down the chairlift if you get stuck in that instance, but they actually prefer to bring you back down on the snow um, mobile thing. So yeah, you just but, let but, someone um, know and they'll yeah, sort you out. Yeah. <laughs> Which would have been fun to come down on that for sure. Mm, yeah, totally. But yeah, so we had another another ski lesson or well, two ski lessons with uh, Mike and Stan. This time we split up. Mike took um, you and me and mm -hmm. Stan took the kids, yep. um, which worked out great. Again, like even more, uh, more attention because smaller yeah. groups. Yeah. And uh, yeah, again, like super experienced. Mike is, yeah, 70 years old, fit as a fiddle. Like he's, mm, he does so the, vibrant. he does the ski Healthy. instructing in the winter and then in the summer months he teaches sailing on Lake Coeur d'Alene. So he's, uh, yeah, and he's, he does he's out marine there. And marine biology, biology as well. He's been well-traveled. Mm. He used to be in the, used to be in the snow patrol uh, for like 25 something years or whatever. And yeah, he's, he's been out he's done a lot. Yeah. <laughs> he well, knows his stuff. <laughs> it was funny. We, when he took us down, he took us down the green run uh, on our lesson, which was great. It was 
probably the most challenging one we did then, but he was wonderful in getting us down there and helping us feel confident and teaching us all these great skills. Mm. But we went down one section where it was super narrow and it was just like a sharp drop off, which he warned us about. He said, you're probably going to get scared, but don't worry, you're going to be fine. You're more than capable. We went past and I was like, oh, people ski down that? And we're like, um, have you done it? Have you skied all that? Because it was like very steep you had to kind of launch yourself off and he was just like oh yeah I just did it this morning <laughs> yeah like, just oh my threw myself off the side yeah, of the mountain and just, before just the lesson. carved my way down to the bottom <laughs> no problem it's like yeah I just <laughs> any like other day coffee. <laughs> yeah yeah it's crazy man like 70 years old just uh hopefully I'm doing adventurous things like that when I'm 70 and oh, I just it. out there in nature just you know yep. living life having fun um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's inspiring how these guys, you know, Stan too. He's he was great, yeah, um, great with the kids and yep. patient and um, gentle and yeah, yeah. The girls absolutely adored Stan. They had so much fun being away from us and having a lesson with them. And I do think I recommend doing both. I loved our family lesson experience because we got to be there with the girls and learn together and, and see and watch how they progressed and how good they were. But it was really great then to separate and split off into two groups. So as you said, we could get that more focused attention because mm. we were at different levels. And um, But also because you weren't like as a parent, you know, you've you've got one eye on what you're doing and always the other eye on the kids and there's an mm. element of worrying, especially when it comes to skiing. And um, so that was taken away. But I was talking to Savannah when we saw each other again and <sighs> – I said, oh, so did you like having the ski lesson without mummy and daddy? And she said, oh, yeah, it was really good. She said, because I didn't have to worry about you anymore. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, caring. So, Thanks, girls. So sweet. But yeah, yeah. you don't think that about them, but she's naturally like a little uh, caregiver anyway. But, you know, you think that, that probably is a stress for them, especially you and I mm. kept flying off into the forest. And mm. whenever I crashed, I'd turn around and she was right behind me trying to rescue me so <laughs> it's yeah. nice that they could just go and not worry about that and do their own thing too yeah so that's mike and stan um yeah awesome like i said um teachers skiing in the winter teachers sailing in the summer you know yep. 25 years snow patrol like out there living life yeah inspiring stuff yeah they were great we loved it and another good thing we had the two days of skiing there and two days of lessons so mm -hmm. we had our uh, first day an hour and a half with them and then we had them again on the second day so that mm -hmm. was really beneficial because they knew where we we're all at we already established a relationship we we're getting along really well with them yeah um, i guess so that, yeah and there. the turns like the hardest thing i was having trouble with were the turns and yeah. like gave some great so tips on that how to you know perfect the turns better and once you can do that like yeah you know even it's a, that's how you're supposed to slow down actually yeah not, not the pizza the pizza is like yeah that's last resort emergency but, <laughs> <laughs> pull the handbrake <laughs> but yeah the, he was had some great tips for doing that and and the other thing which will actually probably the hardest thing that i kept stuffing up was getting off the ski lift oh, and ridiculous. like if you're a newbie like us you, you've all been there like <laughs> Oh my gosh. The one issue we had uh, back at Lookout Pass, actually, um, when we went up, not knowing the terrain and the and the resort, we, we were on the all-in-one ski lift. No, we were split up, but, um, two on one ski lift, two on another. But, yeah, we didn't realize when Savannah got to the top of the, the ski lift that she couldn't reach the ground. Cause yeah, the, um, the skis didn't rest on the ground. No, so little... she had to, like, jump out of the chair yeah. onto the sand which she didn't she panicked and stayed on the chairlift so we we're all off and she's like turning around the bend she was half hanging off it half hanging still. off and about to go back down the mountain and luckily the guy you know reacted pretty quickly he was running it and, and stopped it yeah. so she could get off safely and, and she was fine but yeah yeah. Oh, the ski lifts. Like, how hard are they? they like, it's are just a mental hardest. thing. Like, I mean, you can tell the guy to slow it down and stuff like that, but it's still, I don't know, there's just something about it. Just coming <laughs> coming from a sitting, it's all time, as Mike taught us, it's all, you got to shuffle your butt to the, the front of the, the chair mm -hmm. and you got to time when you stand up and lean forward as you, you just, as, just as the slope starts yeah. to, to start. Yeah, and, it is um, once we, an art. Once you learn those couple little tricks and techniques, we'll fine. But before that, I was like, 
anything goes. Like it was just, why am I falling? Why, why can't I do this? No, I know. <laughs> it, it, that's one of the only things I remember from our first ski experience that we had way back in 2005 on the fake snow in North oh. Carolina is we were terrible. Embarrassing I mean, ourselves we in fell front of everybody. <laughs> on the line just to get on the thing. We both got smacked by the chairlift coming around. Crashed Because if you're burned. not positioned and ready quickly, because yeah. they come around quick, you got to like shuffle over and get in line and get yourself ready and look behind you. I just all of a sudden remember. getting whacked by this cheerlift. And we were on the ground. They had to stop it. And I remember people in the line looking at us like, who are these you people? Fools. They can't even get on the lift. <laughs> but then I remember the first time, we, we had no idea. We'd never done this before. We didn't we have a cut, lesson, did we? I we had remember. one lesson, one hour long that did remember. nothing. But we went up there and <laughs> it wasn't until we were almost at the top watching the person in front that we looked at each other and went, oh, oh. my God, we have to ski all off this chair like we th- I don't know what we thought we thinking, thought oh, they they're going to stop, stop it. it and you stand up hop off step to the side it's like no this thing just keeps going and we screamed <laughs> out at the person do we have to ski off this and they just nodded and laughed That's and both of us I mean we were just a tumbling mess rolling mm. down on top of each other it was ridiculous yeah <laughs> um, but the hardest thing is like we had four of us on one chairlift several times like you need space because we're not if you don't go dead straight or if someone Crash. puts an arm out and pushes on next to you you just end up tumbling over and then you're worried about the people coming behind you, you they're going to run out, out of the way like, hustle, hustle 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 <laughs> so anyway that was fun but yeah I think we're good now yeah, we're good. we and know how to do it now it's funny on the we'll talk, talk about it in, this moment, in a moment but on the last day we, we had a camera crew filming us for a um, winter 2022 campaign for Visit Idaho because we were on the trip there with Visit Idaho and uh, so it was like like the last second last run I think mm. and they said okay we want to get the four of you getting off the chairlift together and we're like oh, oh awesome. you're kidding are you? <laughs> this is our first time as the four of Bloop- us on the one chairlift bloopers here we go <laughs> now we have to get off so they slowed it right down but the pressure we're getting off with these cameras in our faces the oh. four of us but we nailed it. We did it. We it did like, it. It comes perfect. This, I think, you know, here comes this Aussie family, like, no idea what they're doing. <laughs> this should be good. We're trying to promote skiing, skiing here, guys. Can you at least just get off the chairlift? <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, this is the hardest thing we ever have to oh, do. Oh, man. I mean, it's honestly, when you think about it, it's not that difficult. You're just mentally and just, like, timing. Yeah. Like, those two things. Yeah. And, yeah, it's not hard. No. <laughs> Fun, fun stories from a chairlift. Let us know your chairlift stories because I'm sure every skier who's mm. ever skied has a chairlift story. Yeah. I'm absolutely sure of it. And a stacking story as well, going too fast and hurtling into something, whether yeah. it's a fresh snow powder or a tree. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so – and also Silver Mountain was loads of fun because we did snow tubing, oh, which was right. so yes. nice because it was still thrilling and fun, but mm. it didn't have that – intensity of fear that skiing has. You need any skiing, technique. You're just worried all the time about getting out of control. You don't have to worry about stopping. You just stop you know, at the bottom yep, when you hit the, 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 the hay stuff. Like, it was fun. Just relax for an hour. Yeah. Then. then we had beautiful views. Like we could really mm. enjoy the views because we were just racing down the runs. They have five lanes there. and you can race um, each other. Yeah, it's Race cool. each other. And you get two-hour block tickets. So it was nice for the two hours to, 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 to do that. It was loads of yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it was good that we got that, um, mix it up with the skiing and the tubing Mm -hmm. and then the water park. Yeah. Yep. We had that too. Um, so the, they had, they actually had that moose sluice was quite the roller, not roller coaster, but the water slide. slide. Yeah, in the dark. Yeah, that was fun. (laughs) I guess if you're familiar with Great Wolf Lodge's, um, indoor water park, um, attached to a hotel, it was kind of like that, like with a, um, a lazy river. A flow rider where you, you're on the like the surfboard and like kneeboard and stuff on the like the wave pool. Yep. And a few different water slides and a big splash bucket thing that you're probably familiar with. Yeah. So yeah, that was good. It was fun. It was nice. It was eighty four degrees in there, mm. so you forget that you're in, you know, surrounded by snow peaked mountains. So yeah. it was just a nice little uh, just a change. Mm-hmm. Change up the pace of what we were doing and just to relax and have fun together. So that was great. And that's yeah. included with your stay there. If you book directly through the lodge. lodge. Yes. Yeah, if you book through like Airbnb or anything, then you won't 
you'd have to pay extra for that. And they are uh, condominiums, which is why you could re- you probably could rent them through Airbnb, I think. Yeah, and it was a great condo too, actually. That Plenty was, of space, yeah. like full kitchen, separate bedroom. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was a good condo. Yep. And a rooftop hot tub, just yes, quietly. Yes, that was great. We finished the day overlooking the mountain with sun setting in the back. Um, spectacular. Yeah, it was a great way to, to end it, um, the ski trip, which was – it was just so awesome. We just had so much fun. And that the last Silver Mountain was so great because we felt a lot more confident then. And, and the Alpen Way was the run, mm. the trail that we loved, the green trail. It was like a bit of enough challenge there for us to keep mm. us sort of engaged interested. and interested. Mm. But it was also really beautiful moments where more we cruisy. felt cruisy and comfortable. <laughs> and yeah. could really, it could really that just was a nice soak long up run the too. ski experience. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was beautiful, the Alpen Way. So remember that we've got photos and video coming as well. But that's mm-hmm. when we had the camera crew with us. Um, so, yeah, the filming stuff for the commercial that's coming out in the fall, so around November. Um, and that was just a, a lot of fun. They were great. The camera crew were great. But they were just incredible. Watching them lug this, not just carry this heavy equipment, but actually film using Yeah, the it big gimbal. While um, they're skiing. Yeah, no, I picked it up. It and was snowboarding. Heavy. Like this big frame with this big camera and the lens, man. It was heavy. I yeah. picked it up. Yeah. But yeah, it's pretty talented. They're, they're dude amazing. Dude on the snowboard. And- <laughs> yeah, following us around behind us, skiing in front, behind, all around and filming. It was like I was just blown away. Meanwhile, yeah. I couldn't stay standing. Yeah, yeah. And here they were. It's pretty talented. And at one stage, the they said the footage was – magical down the Alpen way because somehow all of us as a family had just managed to ski and sink mm. down the mountain and look like we knew what we were doing. But at that stage, Jake on the snowboard <sighs> goes on the edge of the cliff with just the edge of his snowboard hanging off the cliff filming us. No, no. I was like, what are you this doing, is dude? Nuts. How can you do that? You're making me feel very, um, <laughs> very insecure. Very insecure. Very much a rookie. <laughs> and then it was so funny. It was our last run, and it was everything went perfectly, and we were almost at the uh, chairlift at the end. And I was like, "This is." magical this I, i'm coming back because i hadn't fallen over i was like this is the best run i've done i'm going to be skiing all the time and just as i'm thinking that jake's behind me on the snowboard getting close to try and get close shots of me and everything and clips my skis and brings me down uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was like oh no i nearly jake. got one run without a fall yeah. he was so embarrassed poor jake but it was watch your it camera was funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. so that yeah that was it Good that memories. was our Ski trip, and I think the mark of a great travel adventure is one that you will talk about for years to come and share those stories, the ones that made you laugh, the ones that made you cry. And, you know, it was a week, but we had, you know, packed full of stories and not just the experience of skiing together and falling down and the achievements, but the people we met too who were just, you know, wonderful and it was so good to be able to interact with people like that again, I think. Mm. Oh, I wish I didn't wait 47 years. Like, yeah. I totally see the attraction and, mm. um, yeah, I loved it. It was fun. Oh, it was, like, challenging but in a good way. And, you know, I just loved being at the top of the mountain. Yeah. Um, and it's just so peaceful, incredible views. But then, And then the adrenaline of carving down the mountain, the slope, but again, like, like there's no like noise of motor vehicles mm. or outside like city noise. It's just you and the mountain. Um, so it was, you know, exhilarating and, and, and blissful all in one. It, it was really a was. really cool contrast. I like it's just you and the forest yep. just being present and, you know. Um, Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. So, yeah, definitely, definitely see the addiction and I'm like just so excited now that all the new travel experiences yes. that open up because we – um, you know, winter time we usually try and escape oh, the winter. I mean, we go hiking and stuff like that. But, but I was just thinking, like all the places you can go skiing, not just in the US, like Colorado mm. and New Mexico and um, Utah, California. Idaho, California, um, Vermont. Oh, it's just endless. And then all of Canada, yeah. and then all of Europe, and like Japan, New Zealand. It's just like all these new exciting yeah. places we can go to now and, and, and go skiing and yeah, like, it's great. like Christmas time and just get amongst the magic and 
Yeah, yeah, we can't wait now. As, yeah, Craig said, it opens up a whole new world. Like, yeah. why do we wait forty-seven years to do this? Yeah, totally. <laughs> well, me, be like, forty-five of you, <laughs> but um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so cool. Yeah, it's so good. Now it's you know usually like, well, what Caribbean island can we escape to in the winter? But yeah. now it's like, I think we'll pencil in just two weeks. Do a week or two, two, weeks, two weeks for winter. <laughs> yeah, but we won't ski every day. No. Like this this trip, we went from never skiing to six days in a row. Yeah, like if you could go for two weeks and like have rest days. Yeah, kind of like how you attack theme parks like you can't go all day every day it's tiring yeah so you like ski for a day chill out for a day in a village or explore something else um yeah or ski one day tube the next day and then go um back country stuff on the on the um, snowmobiles on the snowmobiles like so many different activities we haven't even done but yeah that's you know, what i want to look at now in the whole like mm. um the sledding with the dogs and all of that like there's so much now oh that we can do and I snowshoeing know. the hiking with the snowshoes I don't on know like, about that <laughs> yeah I think that'd be fun like this as long as you but you have to be wearing the right clothes like oh, I can't yeah. be freezing I've got no, to be layered that. up properly and that really made it um, very manageable for us because we do hate being cold so that helped a lot and helped us to be able to enjoy it but I just think there's so many more adventures on the horizon oh man now I us. always go back to Northern Idaho because we love it there it's our first time and we, yeah. we love it anyway love Idaho is um, the most surprising state to Beautiful. us in the US and we love it it's like under the radar but the secret's getting out y'all it um, is <laughs> it really is but yeah so much space and the landscape and the people the food the coffee yeah, like it's, it's it's, it's a big surprise but yeah I always go back there but like I said, you know, like I'm excited about all the new ski opportunities. Yeah. Like, and the up. girls too, mm. they loved it. They really loved it. And, yeah. Uh, they're excited as well and thinking about. Yeah, it's another way Europe for them to meet and, kids. They can go like um, do ski lessons, mm. meet other kids and having fun. And yeah. Yeah. Bring it, it on. So that was our first family ski experience. Totally worth it. Highly <laughs> recommend it. It's a bit late now. Snow's melting everywhere. Well, actually, um, it still depends where you want to go. Like you might out have there, a week I think into left, April of the North Idaho. Um, yeah, but yeah, mid April. They have a good long season. Not yeah. like here in the Carolinas, but <laughs> no, that's right. Long and um, lots of powder. So think mm-hmm. about it for um, the upcoming winter this year. Yeah, and hopefully we should be. Back to as normal as normal can be by yep. next winter. Yep. Um, fingers crossed. There's light at the end of the tunnel. There sure is. And you can find our post on skiing in Idaho. We'll have one coming out soon about the lessons we learnt too, um, and some uh, YouTube some, some new video. new videos yep. coming. Um, we got a bunch of content coming. Yep. Um, just and, bear with us. And we'll let you know in November when the commercials live. We can't wait mm-hmm. to see it. It's yeah, be fun to see. Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a commercial for Idaho's 2022 ski season. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, that's us. That's when us. you see it, that's us on the tubes, flying <laughs> down the tube and crashing it in the forest. That's what we do best. Yeah. Hi <laughs> right, guys, thanks for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Remember to like, uh, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment, share us with your friends. Ding that bell. <laughs> All right, guys, see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.